Alright, welcome back to another week of the Weekly Rant. And with, uh, I'm Jimmy, this is my partner Steve. Howdy. And uh, we, we got another uh, another big night ahead of us. We actually have tonight one of our first guests are going to call in. Looking forward to that, going to be talking about the MMA. Um, getting into the rundown though. Well, before we do that, um, do you want to start this at the rundown or just go with it? No, we'll, we'll start with the rundown first. Alright, we'll the rundown, we're going to discuss off the top what Steve saw when I brought him to the Rangers game this weekend. We're going to talk about the Giants and their third straight win over a third crappy opponent. Ten weeks in, finally every team has a win in the NFL. And somewhere the 2008 Detroit Lions are celebrating. We're going to talk with Bobby Rajalbi and Mike Sanchez of the MMA blog It's MM Azing about UFC 167, which is going to be happening this Saturday night. Why couldn't we come up with a creative name for our show like that? You got the weekly rant. <laughs> <laughs> you can't spell MMA. <laughs> I can't spell MMA. <laughs> or UFC for that. <laughs> uh, the debate tonight is going to be uh, an entertaining one. It's going to be about a San Diego fan getting a citation for throwing a football at a uh, San Diego football game. Always fun. We'll talk about that a little later. We'll also talk about NHL superstar Steven Stamkos, last year's goal-scoring champion. Breaking his tibia and out indefinitely. How will that break the Lightning's chances? Breaking news from this morning was Robbie Cano, Curtis Granderson, and Hiroki Kuroda, all three of them declining their qualifying offers from the New York Yankees. How's that breaking news? We all knew that was going to happen. Just, all right, I'll go with it. <laughs> we'll also talk about this week in football. Will the Jets go to 6-4? and four? Will the Giants win their fourth straight? Who knows? Stick around for tonight's rant. It's going to be different. If you hadn't heard the story, if you remember it, it's from a while back. You're going to like it, that's for sure. You better hope. But, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, what did you see this weekend? Let's, let's actually, this past weekend, we had mentioned that we were going to the Ranger game. Rangers won um, a pathetic game against the Florida Panthers where they were supposed to blow them out. I'm just happy to see they're finally over 500. Um, a lot of viewers don't like to talk about hockey. We'll steer off that because more important than a Ranger victory is what we saw and what Steve got the biggest kick out of. Since I ranted two weeks ago, three weeks ago, about what I saw at the Coliseum. What'd you see at the Garden? Well, let's flash, let's flash back to a few weeks ago. Jimmy ranted, one of his prolific rants, about how the Islander fans had no class for not taking off their hats during the National Anthem. Now, Ranger fans, you're worse. You don't even stand up. She wasn't a fan. She was a, she's a person. It's a National Anthem. You had to remind people to take their hats off. You had to remind me to remind people. Yeah, so that's even worse! <laughs> but that, that's not even the kicker. Some 20-something girl who probably went through a stage of anorexia while she was younger decided she felt the need, because she needed her cigarettes so badly, to light up in the middle of the section. Nope, she didn't stand outside. She didn't go in the stairwell like people do sometimes. She lit up right in front of everybody, in front of a 10-year-old kid, in front of those Australian girls, that's in front right. of... Um, the old people. But the worst part was she was sitting right in front of, like you said, a 10-year-old girl. Right in front of her. And she kept blowing even after the mom said, stop. Well, you know, she was thinking, screw this. Oh, she really was bad to the bone. <laughs> really. It was... And, you know, her friend, she was with a group of about 10 people, all Jersey Shore rejects. Uh, classy people up the wazoo in front of us. Oh, that was incredible. They really gave Ranger fans a great name, you know? I think they keep straight out of Seaside Heights. <laughs> Jersey Shore is best right there. Fist pumping. And you know what? Her friends even ignored her after that point. You know why? Oh, they because did. you are trash. Stop lighting the cigarettes. You know what? It would be one thing if it was a water vapor shit. But yeah. No. This was the real freaking thing. Gross. Yep. yep. And you wonder why no one likes you. Moving on. Hey, an accomplishment for me. I didn't even phase me after quitting for eight months. It was like... I was, I'm, good job. Hey, there you go. I, I, was, I, I, I was just legitimately pissed. I said, that's good. Not that it's going to affect me. It's the, it's the girl that's sitting behind her. I thought it was complete garbage. But, you know, I did learn something new. The person to my left is one of the most obnoxious fans ever. He is the one that does the Dennis Pop Van whistle, or the Pop Van sucks whistle at every Ranger game he goes to. And you know what? That whistle is so annoying. You want to demonstrate right now? No, I don't. Good. I don't. Moving <laughs> on, let's go to football. The New York Giants had an unconvincing 24-20 victory over the Oakland Raiders, bringing their record to 3-6 and six now. Two games behind this Dallas Cowboys, who or yeah, 3-6 and six now? Yeah. yeah. Who, who, Dallas Cowboys, two and a half behind, who 
Lost two, though. Whoever they lost. The New Orleans Saints, 39-17. Yeah. Now, Jimmy, this game was ugly all the way. Yeah. Um, are you proud that the Giants won this game? That's actually a tough question to answer. Um, am I proud? Yeah, sure, because you know what? Hopeful thinking. You as a Jets fan know all about hopeful thinking. I'm just that realistic Giants fan. I look at who they played the past three out of the four weeks. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm just happy they won. They have Green Bay coming up next. As far as this game goes, it was ugly. It was. It was. It was. It was I mean, they still had three turnovers. You know, they only got two turnovers from from the Raiders. Um, you know, I, I, it was sloppy. Like you said, it was sloppy. The best part about it was Andre Brown. Yep. Welcome back. To back, welcome, back, to back, welcome weeks. back. Back to back weeks. He is proving to be what everybody thought he was going to be, which I, I'm stoked. That's awesome. That's great. If he can give us a hundred to a hundred thirty yards a game. That's great. That's showing off for our offensive line, which was trash throughout the entire year during the 0-6 stretch. Everybody's trash through 0-6 stretch. But it's uh, they're showing that they have potential to be a dangerous team. I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs. They're not going to make the playoffs. I will bet my life on that they're not going to make the playoffs. However, How about just 10 bucks? I'll, I'll just I'm 10 kidding. Bucks. I'm kidding. I don't want to bet on that. You know. <laughs> they, um, they, what they can be is they can be that team down the stretch to really ruin someone else's playoff hopes. That's the position that they're in right now. But Eli Manning looked pitiful yet again. He threw that awful pick to Tracy Porter, and now Tracy Porter has the claim that he's picked six, both Manning brothers. If only Cooper came back to the NFL or tried to make the NFL. I would break the crap out of that. He's, that was, That's awesome. It looked like he threw the ball right to Tracy Porter. It wasn't even close. Um, Jarrell Jernigan fumbled, one, fumbled the opening kickoff. Yep. Uh, the only saving grace on special teams was the block punt for the touchdown. Uh, that was nice, but the outside of Andre Brown, they looked weak. Eli Manning missed a wide open Victor Cruz in the end zone. Um, well, do they consider that a turnover? What block punt return for touchdown? Yeah, it's a, they do. Yeah, I thought that. I think that's stupid. I think that's stupid. Well, it's a turnover. The the, the Raiders were punting the ball. The Giants blocked and they picked it up. I well, mean, you know what though? It wasn't the conventional way of the ball getting to you. Now, granted, they they had Terrell Pryor. Okay, fine. Take that with a grain of salt as well. Not a real quarterback. Exactly. However, again, this goes to prove what I said a couple of weeks ago. Playing these teams, especially now that they came out of the bye, and going into the bye after beating, um, I forget who they beat going into the bye. They beat uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, yeah. Now, when you're playing teams that aren't playing so well like this, you know what, that keeps your team uh, motivated, gives you confidence. You look at their secondary, excuse me, they let up basically the same amount of yards, rushing and passing, 106 in passing, 107 in rushing. That's great. That's biting my lip to say this. That's almost Jets' number, except the Jets would let up two rushing yards and a half. Yes. But, uh, I, oh, wait, let's. There it is. I got one for the Jets. Um, the Giants' secondary looks really good. They, uh, tell me a better defensive player than Angel Roll right now. I can't. Uh, that's not being biased. He is so actually backing up everything <clears throat> he's been saying. He has been a dominant force the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, it's been excellent. You guys have faced Josh Freeman. Matt yep. Barkley. Thank you. Terrell Pryor. And next week you're going to face the All-Pro Scott Tolson. Matty Flynn. No, no Matty Flynn. Scott Tolson's named the starter already. Matt really? Flynn is I the thought backup. They said, wow, I thought they said he was going to start. Matt Flynn is the backup. So well, you know Colton's going to pick up that tape on that because they expect him to show up. In the past, in, so the last four games, they have faced guys with a combined win total of three this year. And that's all Terrell Pryor's wins. So... Giants are getting lucky, but then again, everyone's been saying that about Kansas City Chiefs. They faced uh, all pros Jeff Toole, uh, right? Josh Freeman. You know, they step aside the 0-6. And, 6. and I, I, I hate when people bring that into arguments, but I'm going to do it for a second for a reason here. Take the 0-6 and put that aside for a minute. You look at the teams the Giants have played. Were they not supposed to beat those teams? You're right. They were supposed to beat those teams. Absolutely. You know what? Absolutely. But the way Nick Foles has been playing with Philadelphia – just, it may have been a different game had Nick Foles actually been healthy for that game against the Giants and not Mike Vick, Matt Barkley combination. Um, I mean, then again, Phil, Philadelphia was at home, so they haven't won. They've lost their last 10 home games, so chances are they may have lost. They would have lost that one anyway. Just no, I'm pretty sure Foles actually played well that game anyways when he came in after Vick. Foles was out. It was Vick and Barkley. Oh, Vick, Foles, Barkley. Yeah, yeah, Barkley came in quick, though. Okay. Um, but whatever. Either way, good for the Giants. It's great. Uh, moving on. Um, both winless teams actually won this week. 
Yeah, Jacksonville, 29-27. They, they uh, look good. They look good the entire game. game. Uh, Jake Locker got knocked out with a Liz fra- fra- Fracture. I'd say that five times. Yeah, man. do that yeah. again. <laughs> uh, I still got it wrong just to begin with. But I thought you were say something else. No. No, 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 no. Uh, he's out with a Liz fra- fra- Fracture. I can't even do it. I can't. I quit. I quit. With a Liz Frank Fracture. There we go. Boom. He's out for the rest of the year. Uh, Jacksonville looked good from beginning to end. Chad Henney really had a few good passes. MJD had a strong game. I think he was the first 100-yard rusher that for Jacksonville this season. Uh, Tennessee pff, basically knocked themselves right out of their own playoff destiny, falling a game behind the Jets for the sixth playoff seed. Uh, and in Tampa, uh, the Buccaneers got off the schneid as well. Boy, they helped out the Jets big time. Absolutely. Buccaneers having a convincing 22-19 win, in which the game really wasn't as close as it seemed. Yeah, no, really, you're right. Bucan- was Buccaneers were pretty dominant the entire way through. Um, it wasn't... Uh, Ryan Tannehill threw a couple touchdowns to some receiver I've never heard of before. Yeah. Um, to bring that game close. Actually, they did have a 16-15 lead at one point. And then Mike Glennon of uh, NC State fame was able to lead them down the field to a touchdown in the fourth quarter. But, you know, which one was more impressive? i got to say Jacksonville. Um, mainly because Tampa Bay has shown life. They have been in a lot of games this year. They've made a lot of games close. Jacksonville, not so much. They had one game that was close, and that was, I believe, actually two weeks ago it was almost close. But Jacksonville has been getting blown out every single game. Tampa Bay, like I said, they've been in every single game. They really have. Uh, maybe at least five of them they've been in. So more, well, neither of them are impressive. Let's put that out there. But uh, to see Tampa Bay win, that was a surprise. I gotta say, Jacksonville was more surprising. Well, what do you think about um, <clears throat> the loss and what it does to Miami? That's gonna hurt Miami's hopes. I mean, look, you look at it this way: the Jets going into the bye with the Patriots. Both of those teams came out with the win. Pointless for the Patriots because they're running away with that division right now. But. That loss to Miami hurts them big time. That's going to set them back, especially if the Jets come away with the victory this weekend. That's really going to set them back, regardless of what Miami does, because that's going to basically pull Miami out of the wild card play, uh, push. You know, I hate to bring it up because I really didn't want to today, but did you see the Incognito interview with Jay Glazer on Sunday? The only thing I've heard about the Incognito situation is that the NFL is requesting that the Dolphins do not um, contact more. Um, yeah, they postponed it a week. I think it's because they realized that this investigation is going to give John Martin a lawsuit on a silver platter. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's going to be ridiculous. They're, the ba- NFL is basically investigating a lawsuit to get themselves sued. <laughs> that's gonna, but that's going to put a red target on, on, Martin, on his back. I mean, who's going to want to bring him play right, ever Exactly. Again. Who's going to want to bring him in? And the Miami Dolphins this week have all defended him. And you know what? I said it last week. John Martin should have been a man. And stepped up for his actions, as opposed to running away to mommy and daddy and then hiring a bunch of lawyers. Granted, lawyers are good. That's why I have a job. But. How long ago was this, though, anyways? Two weeks ago. Okay. No, 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 no. Oh, how long was this going on? Yeah. Since, he's alleging since the beginning. Exactly. And, you know, apparently he sent texts with that cute dog meme that says, I'm going <clears> to yeah. kill your family. And he's laughing about it. Joe You're Charles laughing about, about it. What the hell is wrong with you? If you don't feel like you're going to fit in, don't act like you do. Come on, you learned this in grade school. Now, what about what about the Dolphins? Okay, how do they look after this whole thing, saying we're taking Incognito back in and we're not pulling the C off his jersey? They sh- well, they shouldn't. He's done. What has he done wrong? But this whole situation, they are now the New York Jets. Well, the they- New York Jets are not the New York Jets. The New York Jets are good. Media purposes, media wise, and making a mockery of themselves. Themselves. How do you think this uh, they're portrayed now? I think the entire state of Florida with their football teams is a freaking circus. Yes. You got Tampa Bay with Greg Schiano and Darrell Rivas. You have the you have the swine not the swine flu the staff infection uh, dilemma they had at the beginning of the year in which Lawrence Time still hasn't played a game yet. Uh, he's doing he's doing the bucks for that one. We got the Jacksonville Jaguars in which they can't get out of their own way. Their best receiver got arrested or not arrested. He got suspended again. For marijuana possession, because he can't I mean, stop sm- he can't stop smoking the ganja. <clears throat> Learn a lesson, Twain Bo. It's not good for you. Um, <laughs> and then you got the Dolphins and this whole Martin Incognito nonsense. You got Jeff Ireland who said that Martin should have punched him in the face. And while I said that last week, 
You're the general manager of the football team. I'm just some loud guy on the radio talking. And I'm not even the main guy of the show. That's this guy right here next to me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I come back with, hello. You know, nice I, you could you. have at least ranted a little bit on that one. I set you up. I know, I zoned out a little bit. I, uh, we, we do that as one of those speaks, actually. Um, and I got to ask you, why the hell do you have the damn Islander game on? I told you. I, I, there we go. I win. You just missed the on the score on the goal, too. I don't care. Um, but, you know, we're going to have our MMA guests in just a few moments. Um, they're just calling into the hotline right now. So they should be on in just a minute or two. But before we get there, um, let's have one last wrap-up. Let's have one last uh, wrap-up on the... On the Giants. Yeah, the Giants, um, they're going to look pretty good here. This goes actually back to our debate about the Packers, how I said they're going to be okay. Um, you tell me that they're not, and you know what? You're definitely winning that debate now because Seneca Wallace is out, and like you said, here comes um, playing quarterback. What's his name? Uh, I'm, at a, I'm at a loss. Either way, the Giants, so the Packers are coming in to New York. They're going to play the Giants, a 425 game. I uh, I got the Giants sneaking away with this victory. I think so too. With Scott Tolson playing, I mean, there's you're not gonna have they're not gonna have that many um, that many receivers. And you know, uh, the Packers receivers looked pretty bad last week. Uh, Jared Boykin dropped a bunch, and um, I'm just not sold on them. Eddie Lacy, they're gonna stack nine in the box against him, and it's not gonna be good. And the Giants defensive line has proven to be very well, uh, playing very well these past couple of weeks. I got the Giants actually winning 27-23. Uh, hopefully that comes close to that score. The Giants are, uh, oh, what is it? The line is uh, Giants, what is this, uh, the given six? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, points, 42 and a half. I clearly have the over on that one. So uh, it's going to be a good game, as it always is. A Packers-Giants game is great. Follow up after the, well, actually before the Giants game, is actually going to be the Jets. Jets at Bills. Uh, that line is even. And I also have an over for that game as well. They're over. They're, they're under over. Is set at forty and a half points. I got it going to be fifty three. Um, you know, and we just we just got our <laughs> guest on the line. I, we had some technical difficulties with our second guest. Apparently, his uh, phone is off. But with from the it's mm azing blog, we have Bobby Rajabi. Welcome to the weekly ramp, Bobby. How's it going? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. We're sorry we couldn't get Mike on the phone. His voicemail appeared to be off. Or his voicemail would appear to be on, but... Ah, uh, he's killing me. He's killing me. But we'll talk to you for a few, and I'll try and connect him in a few seconds. Um, so, as we... I, I learned today that t today, actually, November 12th, is the 20th anniversary of the first UFC battle. Am I correct on that? You are accurate. 20 years ago, a bunch of guys got together and thought it'd be really cool to find out who would win a fight between a boxer and uh, <clears throat> and just before I forget, uh, you used to how long ago did you start your blog? It's uh, MM Azing. Yeah, uh, it's MM Azing started in November 2011. And do you guys cover all the fights, and what do you guys really do? Um, well, we try to cover every UFC fight, which makes basically NFL and MMA. Yeah, we try to cover Bellator, uh, which is the B League, basically, and you know we. Uh, so how many of you are a part of the M the M Amazing team? Um, you got me, aka Dr. Law. Um, you got uh, Mike, which is Lavender Booms. You got our uh, buddy DJ Mark, and then you got uh, Kid Presentable, which is Stefan. All right, nice, nice. And how if I wanted to find you after the fact, how would I find you? Uh, you can hit us up at www.itsmamazing.com on Twitter, uh, twitter.com/slash itsmamazing. Now, Bobby, this is uh, this is Jimmy speaking. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How you doing, man? Good. Now, you you mentioned uh, that when the UFC originally started, being that it had kickboxing and jujitsu, uh, wrestling involved. What are some of the for the people who don't follow MMA who are just gaining more interest in it nowadays? What are some more styles of fighting that are being brought to the table nowadays? Well, I mean, the basic 
most everybody who tends to be working with are wrestling, boxing, uh, jiu-jitsu, and some form of kickboxing, be it the Dutch style or the Thai style. A lot of guys are incorporating karate more. Um, you got a guy, Leo Machina, who uses karate more effectively than anybody else in the UFC, using this 10 point fighting to try to score points out of the opponents. And we're seeing the resurgence of Taekwondo, which uh, has guys throwing spinning kicks, mm-hmm. which makes it exciting for everybody involved, except, you know, the guy getting hit with a spinning kick. Well, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you actually mentioned the resurgence of a style of fighting. Uh, because over the past 20 years, uh, again, like Steve had mentioned, this is the 20th anniversary of the first show. How throughout those years has the UFC and MMA, how has all of that changed? Well, the whole point of the UFC really was, uh, it, it was thought of by uh, Hori and Gracie. And if anybody knows anything about jiu-jitsu, the Gracie family is synonymous with it. And they used to, uh, in their gym in uh, Torrance, California, used to have what well, was the Gracie Challenge, where if you could, anybody could come in and if they could defeat a Gracie in a fight, they walk away with, I believe it was fifty or hundred thousand dollars. And then no one ever won against a Gracie, and they finally decided, you know, let's let's promote our art, let's promote our martial arts, and put this all together. So they teamed up with some pay-per-view guys, pretty much just to show that jujitsu was the best form of martial art. And they picked out the younger brother who was skinny and looked very unassuming, Hoy crazy, just to prove that a small guy could take out everybody. And that's what happened. So, I mean, it was almost as if every other martial art was put on notice that first night that, oh, we gotta, it may, be not, may not be the best idea to only focus on one thing. And everybody was trying to find out for this new martial art, which was jujitsu. All right. Uh, let's let's bring it to today's uh, or to what's going on on Saturday. So it's UFC 167, correct? Yeah. And the headliner I was reading up on this: George's Saint Pierre versus Johnny Hendricks. Yeah, uh, George Saint Pierre is. I mean, I don't know how much you guys follow boxing, but for people who do follow boxing, he's essentially the Floyd Mayweather of mixed martial arts. In not the he's not the best boxer in the world, but he's not too different from the opposite in that regard. But in terms of being a complete fighter. And he's completely risk adverse in all situations. That is George St. Pierre. Mm-hmm. He does not. He has no intention of making this exciting if he doesn't need to. He's going to do whatever it takes to shut you down. Uh, he, this is the welterweight competition, right? And St. Pierre has been the champion since two thousand eight. Yeah, and St. Pierre has been champion since two thousand eight. Um, he's the greatest welterweight ever. Obviously, I mean, before him there was Matt Hughes who held it for a while, but St. Pierre beat him twice, so he handled that. And he's the most bankable star the UFC has in terms of pay-per-views, especially since Brock Lesnar decided to go home. Absolutely. And what can you tell us about his opponent, Johnny Hendricks? I've done some research on him. This guy has has him pretty incredible. I saw he knocked um, one guy out in about 12 seconds. The guy has lost one fight in his entire career. Yeah, uh, Johnny Hendricks is... The people have to say he's, you know, so-and-so is the perfect style to beat St. Pierre. At this point, it's kind of questionable. It's kind of questionable who really does. But John Hendricks is a, he has two national titles in a collegiate wrestling, and his left hand is basically a bomb. I mean, if he touches someone's chin at this point, they're going down. And you talk about him knocking out, uh, like, Mark, he knocked out Martin Campman in 46 seconds. Mm-hmm. Martin Campman is one of the toughest, most durable guys in the multiple division. Finished in less than a minute. So you're talking about a guy right now who could go in there and try to stifle George St. Pierre's takedowns and try to land that big overhand left to put him out. Now, is, um, is Johnny Hendricks, obviously he's not, I, I would just say he's not as well-known of a fighter of George St. Pierre, but is he a well-known enough fighter uh, throughout the fans of UFC and MMA? Yeah, uh, people love Johnny Hendricks. He's got a big beard, which is very popular today. He's having a big beard. And he knocks people out, and that's how people really, people like finishes. And, you know, Johnny Hendricks finish fights, and even if he doesn't, it's a war normally. So, and, you it, know, he, he can sell pay-per-views, he gets famous. I mean, right now, he's already, he picked up a Reebok sponsorship uh, a few weeks ago, which is, you know, pretty big for a sport like this. Absolutely, you talk about the big beards, it reminds me to the days when Kimbo Slice was in the UFC for those five seconds. Yeah, those were good <laughs> days. <laughs> I miss those days. I remember watching those on set late Saturday nights. But, you know... People, people think that, you know, some people say that's what they ask about. Do 
some you when you know MMA, then you will follow MMA or cover MMA, they say, what about Kimbo? Is he coming back? And the answer is no. They, 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 wouldn't, they wouldn't ask for any of the Red Sox at all with their beards? <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's quickly go through some of the other uh, fight. Actually, why did the GSP and uh, Johnny Hendricks get the main billing on the on Saturday night? Well, being how big of a show this was, it made sense to put George St. Peter on the card. And this is a fight people have been looking forward to for a while. I mean, some people felt Con I mean, uh, Hendricks deserved this fight before his last victory, even. And when he didn't get it, people accused George St. Peter of ducking him, which. I mean, that's what people do with champions. If you don't get a fight, you claim you're, you're ducking him. And being that George is the most bankable star they have on pay per view, they figured they sent George St. Pierre out there, put him in an exciting front, put him in a guy, fight with a guy who people legitimately think can be him. Because this is the betting line of this fight is far closer than pretty much every George St. Pierre fight in recent memory. And again, before we have Bobby Rajabi from the It's MM Azing blog on the air with us today talking about USC 167. Uh, quickly, let's go through some of the other fights going on Saturday. Um, Rashad Evans and Shale Sonnen. Did I pronounce those names right? I, I probably messed that up. No, you did, you did well there, sir. I mean, I watched enough hockey probably in my life to learn how to pronounce weird names. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I've heard of Shale before. Uh, can you tell me a little about that fight? Well, I mean, at this point, I think most people have heard of Shale because Shale, Shale decided about three years ago that he was sick of being considered as a pretty good middleweight and decided to talk more shit than anybody on the note anything that I've heard of in uh, mixed martial arts. Pretty much just pilfering lines from old pro wrestling also. And Chael picked the fight with the entire country of Brazil, which is what made him famous. And right now, you got him taking on Rashad Evans, who, um, former UFC 205 pound champion, and this fight is contested at 205 pounds with Chael holding up in weight. Uh, it's pretty much, I think the general consensus people have is that Rashad is technically better than Chael everywhere. But there's some question as to Rashad Evans' heart and whether he still wants to do this anymore since his loss to the champion John Jones uh, about a year and a half ago. Okay. Uh, and the other fights, which one, if I, had to, if I had to watch any of those fights, which one would I be interested in watching from the remaining three, I think? Okay, let's say you pay for the pay per view. Okay. All right. Of the fights on the pay-per-view, Robbie Lawler and Roy McDonald had the most intrigue, if you ask me. Roy, Mc Roy McDonald's a good uh, Irish boy, right? Roy McDonald's a good Canadian. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Roy McDonald is this, he's part of this new generation of fighter who grew up with the UFC existing, so it's not that he's just very good at one skill set. Well, very good at one skill and okay at everything else. Roy McDonald has been training mixed martial arts since he was like eight years old. So he's good everywhere. And he is getting dangerously close to a title shot at 170 pounds. And he trains at a George St. Pierre's gym. Alright. So, yep. so Rory wins. Just to have to some people have to answer some questions whether he really wants to take on the man whose house he's basically living at. Now Bobby, uh, this is Jimmy here again. I'm just uh, I'm just starting to get into uh, UFC. I'm still starting to really just Follow whenever it's on Spike TV, whenever I get a chance to watching it. Um, now, a question I have, though, is you look around boxing. I believe it was brought up once before with the Manny Pacquiao fight with uh, Mayweather a few years back, and one of them wanted one another uh, drug tested. Is there any sort of drug testing involved in the UFC? Yeah, the UFC is actually regulated by the same people uh, boxing are regulated by, uh, boxers are regulated by, which is the state athletic commissions. So they come in, they start test all the fighters. And what's interesting with the, what the UFC does is they have this whole branch of their company that's kind of separated. In case they go to a region that doesn't have an athletic commission, they will make a makeshift commission. And interestingly enough, the UFC commission that the makeshift ones tend to catch people testing positive more often than the state commissions do. Wow. Wow. And uh, lastly, we're running out of time in this, uh, but... What if I wanted to watch the fight on Saturday night and I didn't want to pay to watch? Not, not even not even not pay. Even for a viewer who's just starting to just, get involved. Yeah. Like, what's one fight you'll say, you know what, if you haven't watched any UFC and I want you to get into this sport, this is one fight I want you to focus your attention on. Well, I mean, if you're not, I mean, there's, there's a good thing about the UFC is they put on the preliminary fights on regular television. And on the boxing, they don't really... Boxing's all always tend to be, always always been, put one really great fight at the beginning, and then have a whole bunch of fights no one gives a crap about. Mm -hmm. MMA fans and UFC fans have, have come across them to having, to uh, expecting callers to have four or five fights that they're interested. So, this Saturday, uh, the preliminary caller, which will air on uh, Fox Sports 
the image that's going through my head right now is seeing like John Wayne out there lassoing the other fighter. I kind of like the defenseman in Mighty Ducks too with the last uh, <laughs> Tony Robertson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was that Dwayne or whatever? Dwayne Rob Robertson. Don't ask me why I know that, but I do. Hey, he knew it. What? You know, really well, Mighty Ducks about 500 times. Let's be honest. Last week I saw it 500 times, but uh, Bobby, thank you so much. You can see, you can read Bobby on it's mmazing.com or twitter.com. It's M.M. Azing. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoy the fight on Saturday. Thanks a lot, Bobby. All right. Later, boys. And thanks again, Bobby, for all your help. That was, a, that was awesome. I hope you really got, a, got an educational session on the UFC. Oh, yeah. I can actually spell it now. I didn't know it was actually spelled UFC. Do you know what it stands for? Uh, <laughs> you don't want me to guess. <laughs> United Fighting Championship. Come on. Oh, I thought it was Ultimate. Oh, all right. So, oh, I knew it. Damn it. Damn it. Yeah, bitch! <laughs> so, speaking of Jimmy not knowing anything, it's time to move into our weekly debates. Yeah! <laughs> I like that. I like that. So, earlier we had mentioned in the rundown, um, in San Diego, uh, a guy was uh, issued a citation, a $275 cit yep. $280 citation, for throwing a football at a tailgating event. Uh, in the park, in the park, in the parking lot at Qualcomm Stadium. Now you let me start off last week's. I'm gonna let you start off this week just because I want you to start because you did such a great job last week. What, what was I thinking again? You were you you really believe that this was this was the right move? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think it's the right move. I think it's the right move because there's three there's two other venues. I, I didn't write this down. You gotta help me out here. There's two other venues that also have this ban for throwing a ball at a game. It's in Tennessee uh, and it's somewhere else. Right. I don't know where. I don't know the third one, but it's it's difficult to have three venues and not the others. How are you gonna single out three venues and the rest of the NFL, even collegiate, you can do that too. Is that the end of your rant? I'm going with it. I'm just just some of the time. So dumb, so dumb, so dumb, so dumb. <laughs> Really? Because three of them have it? Are you really telling me that it's fair for for a judge to tell Junior that he can't have a football catch with his father in the parking lot because three teams decided they wanted to have this asinine rule? Are you kidding me? Try again. Wow. That was a little... Yeah, uh, that was a little, little overdose. I am saying that, that that's right. That should happen. Because you know what? The minute you start saying this place, that place, and another place... You can't throw a ball. Well, guess what? They're doing it for safety reasons. You have all these people all over the parking lot drinking and have open fire pits with food. Dude down over here is going to throw a football to his father. His father's half in the bag and he missed the football. It's gonna. It's almost like that uh, that car commercial for insurance. Oh, mayhem. We're mayhem. Yeah. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, the barbecue is going to go in the back of a van because the guy has his van door open and kaboom. It's going to freaking open up and go on fire. I love this rule. It's great. Make it around the entire NFL. Save throwing football for Sunday in your own house. I don't think NFL general managers agree with this rule. You look at the, some of the starting quarterbacks in this league. We have Scott Tolson for Green Bay, Terrell Pryor for Oakland. You got Eli Manning in New York. I bet you Jerry Reese is scouring through the parking lot trying to find the next quarterback for the New York Giants. <laughs> <laughs> Shit right now. <laughs> that was pretty good. I like that one. Um, son of a bitch, my train of thought is cut because of that. What does your FC stand for? You know what? It stands for. I'm going to win this rant. Uh, and that's a valid point because you know a little Mark Sanchez may be out there. That's all well and good. Now, do the general managers really care? Hi, how about it's on their property? God forbid the little kid says, oh, I'm going to win this pass. I got it, I got it, I got it. And he runs into the barbecue. He runs into a park car like I used to do on a weekly basis when I was a child. Is that why you lose every debate? Absolutely. <laughs> You're worrying about injuries here. You know, that's a that's a pretty big stand right there. Anybody can sue anybody nowadays. You know that of all people. So all it takes is that one throw. Yeah, go long. Give me a button hook or a curl out that way. Boom, into the Mercedes. And all of a sudden, now a big fight breaks out. You broke my window. You dented this. You dented that. I think it needs to be banned. Now, that person who's running a button hook into a car is probably drunk. So are you trying to tell me now that you want to ban alcohol from all tailgates? Because if you're so concerned about safety, 
alcohol should be the next thing to go. I think alcohol should be at every tailgate because you know what? If I'm going to sit in the freezing cold and freeze my balls off for three hours, I want to be as drunk as possible during the game. So you're telling me now that if I want to ban throwing my football to my father in the parking lot, we might as well just ban alcohol as well? well you, at, that point you might, at that point, you might as well ban people parking in the parking lot. Mass transportation, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I think it needs to happen. I think slowly, it's they use the uh, collegiate level to test everything out. I don't think they should test it out at the collegiate level because you do have the younger kids who tend to drink, and they will get more rowdy. I think they need to test this out at an NFL stadium where you're going to get more of the mature people. Hell, even on a bus, they're not going to ban drinking because they're going to be tailgating coming into a bus in the game. Um, they need to test it out in the NFL. This way, when they have family and friends hanging around, yeah, they're going to be kicking back, having a couple of drinks, but they're not going to want to throw a ball. How many balls are you really seeing throwing around that tailgate? Be honest now. You've got 60,000 people, 70,000 people. You're going to have, let's say, th argument's sake, 20,000 cars, okay? I'm going to say 20,000 cars. How many people are going to see? I'd say probably 20 groups throwing a ball around. All right, but it's not like these guys are playing touch football in the parking lot. They're going. Give me that football right there. So there's not. Give me that football. That one, yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. They're going like this to the guy right next to them. They're not throwing it 65 freaking yards down the field. They're not Kyle. They're doing this. Hey, go on. Well, that was pretty good. Wow. For those. <laughs> For those on right. camera, and obviously it's all of you, Jimmy was actually able to get it on top of his bookshelf, something he will never be able to do ever again. And quite frankly, I don't think he's tall enough to actually get off the top of the bookshelf. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but no, back, back to my actual point. These days, most tailgates are filled with beanbags. So if you're telling me, and this ordinance actually says the exact same thing, you're not allowed to throw anything. Are you telling me I can't play cornhole? Are you telling me I can't play washers? Are you telling me I can't play... I don't know. Baseball, a baseball tailgate. Are you, what are you telling you me? You know what you play? Hit that button. You, hit it again. Try it. There it is. You play chef. You cook. You have beers. You kick back, relax, tell stories, punch each other in the face for all I care. Keep it like within your UFC group. Fighters. There you go. Keep it within your group. I understand because you know, I'm one of the guys who throws the ball around. I'm one of the guys who plays cornhole, plays washers. You know, I'm also one of the guys who plays Let's Get Drunk and Fall Asleep in the Back of a Car. But, you know, at a tailgate... How often do you do that? I don't, you know, a lot. Okay. I'm not at the end. <laughs> I'm also the guy that cooks, and I love doing it. You know what? You're better off grabbing a bunch of buddies and saying, Hey, you know what? Let's have a cook-off. That's ten times more fun to me, having a bunch of guys hanging out drinking beers, having a cook-off, and busting each other's balls saying who can make the better food. Let's have a cook-off? You know, what do we do every Tuesday? We talk sports because we enjoy talking sports, you know? We sit here, we talk sports because we can and we actually do it. You know, those guys who go to tailgates, they drink their beer, they want to believe that they're Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, one of these great quarterbacks. They want to make believe that they're them. Make believe they're still little kids in their backyard playing with their parents or whatever, their friends. And that's what a tailgate is these days. Most of these people who throw footballs, they're old. They can't do anything. Um, they got bad knees. They can't make it in the NFL. So they do it this way. So you're telling me that they get to take away their dream of playing. They're wearing their sport jerseys. They're drinking their beer. They're having a good time. They're just like us, except throwing a football around. No, those guys are the one guys that look around and say, yeah, I got my jersey on. I look like a football player. I never played football in my life. Oh, look, there's three hot girls. Yo, Bobby, go down that way. Ryan, hit the route that way. Let's show off these girls who we're not even going to talk to because they're too hammered. Let's show them we know how to play football. Boom, there you go. The two drunks collide. Next thing you know, the ball is in the back of someone's window, and there's a flame going because of someone's barbecue. Just because it happens on Mayhem, and you saw that scene out of American Pie 2, it does so not mean that it fitting. actually happened. It's so fitting. Anyway, that was our debate for the week. Good job. That was really like good. That. that was good. Like that, that was that good. Now... If you guys, before we do forget, uh, Sunday, December 1st, we will be having our first of hopefully many road shows at Old Street Restaurant and Grill. Yeah, that's the name of it. Old, Old Street, Street Restaurant, Restaurant and Bar, Restaurant and bar uh, located in Smithtown, the L.A. Fitness Shopping Center from 1130 to 1. We'll have prizes, and you'll have a chance to rant yourself if you feel the need. Yeah, we're going to have a couple of, uh, we just got new shirts printed up, which again, if you go on our website at facebook.com backslash Jimmy Rants. You'll actually see our front and back of the t-shirts we'll be giving away. Uh, we'll be having a lot going on that day. Um, we also have some stuff we like to give away. We, we rounded up some of our own stuff as well. 
that uh, you know we never did with. So we, we have a couple of Mets items, for example, that we want to give away. Uh, a lot of prizes. The stuff that we actually got was from the games that we went to all year long. Yeah, we got some with, good. Um, we got some good stuff. Some bobblehead yeah. dolls and yep. And maybe even a gnome. Maybe a gnome. We got some winter hats too. It's gonna be cold that day. I mean, you look at snow this morning. Yeah, but you know that hat's pretty disgusting. I, I saw the hat. I'm, I'm sorry. It's, yeah, it's... Well, I'm a Yankee fan, so I will gladly give it away to a man. I'll give you one. If you I, want. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be caught dead in that shit. I'd say yeah, I keep that full head of hair warm, but you know what? I, I'm the one missing hair, so I might walk out of there with the Met hat on, keep this one full spot back here warm. But it's gonna be a good time. Five dollar appetizer specials. Uh, I think it's half off beers. And it's I, gonna, I don't know. So they got they got a couple of beer they got specials. a couple of beer specials. It's gonna be a good time. You might as well head on down, bring the family, bring the kiddies, bring the wife. It's gonna it's gonna be for those who watch the show. It will be PG rated. Uh, the bar itself is actually combined with a restaurant, so you'll get our typical antics. You just won't hear us saying uh, bullshit, asshole, which is probably for the best. It, it is for the best. I said too much in two seconds there. But the word shellact <clears throat> will be used many times. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> matter of fact, will be used. <laughs> yeah, you haven't said it once yet. But I moving have, on, have, uh, if you have a need to call us, you can call us at 609-975-9689, or you can tweet us at Jimmy Rants. Uh, moving on, we're going to move on to hockey, uh, another sport which many people care about. Uh, in the world, uh, yesterday on uh, Veterans Day, Tampa Bay played Boston Bruins, and Steven Stamkos will be out for, for a lot of the season now. Uh, how is this injury going to hurt the it's, Tampa Bay Lightning? It's going to hurt them pretty badly. They played Boston last night, who Tampa Bay was three points up on, and Boston came back and beat them 3 nothing. And now Boston is only a point behind the Eastern Conference leading Tampa Bay Lightning, who is basically leading the NHL, the Eastern Conference, rather, as An Anaheim runs away at the West already. But Tampa Bay is running away at the East right now, um, basically because of Steven Stamkos and their captain, uh, Martin St. Louis. It's going to hurt them a lot, uh, especially when you had a team that got a lot, got rid of Vincent LeCavalier last year to go to Philadelphia. Um, if you've seen it, it was because Dougie Hamilton and, and Steven had crashed the net. Dougie is not a dirty player. Uh, he's shown signs in the past of having damaging hits and everything, but what Boston Bruin hasn't? We all hate the Bruins. It was a very bad play to watch. If you haven't seen it, it's all over YouTube. You're going to watch the, want to watch the last 10, 15 seconds of it to see what really happened. It was above the ankle. And above the ankle in the front of his foot is where he collided with the post as he was going down. Um, it just snapped back like as if you're breaking one of those wishbones off. It was a brutal injury, and it must have damaged some nerves because he didn't feel it right away. Once He, he tried to get back up twice. Finally, he went back down in just agonizing pain. You can see it's just excruciating on his face. He got so bad to the point where even one of the Boston Bruins trainers came over and immediately rushed to the ice. Um, Holy shit. That's what every <laughs> fan was saying in the crowd. <laughs> uh, and so it was pretty damaging. And uh, they're going to be left with us, Stamkos, now, who uh, came into the, that game as the league-leading tied uh, for goals. At 14, and Tyler City Crows in for points at 23. And now he's out. It's, it's going to suck for him, mainly because you look at the players in the past. Since he came into the league in 2008, he scored the most goals in the NHL, 222. He's right now, Ovechkin has one goal less than him at 221. You have players such as Jeff Carter, who's behind him at 164. Corey Perry at 174. You have, um, who's between the both of them, uh, Patrick Marlowe, 174. Ovechkin, 220, like I said. You know, coming in when, when uh, Stamkos originally started, he wasn't getting a lot of playing time. You look and realize why is because they had the new coach, who was Barry Melrose, who was one of my favorite coaches of all time. I was actually there for his first game, and Steven Stamkos' his first game, who he played for his, I think it was nine games that Barry Melrose was the coach for before he got fired. Um, he played Stamkos those nine games. He didn't even play him a total of 30 minutes, those entire stretch of games. And next thing you know, look what he turns out to be. So, uh, it's a big loss for the team. It's a big loss for the NHL, actually. There's a lot of people who are probably turning us off right now because we're talking about hockey. But you know what? Nobody now cares that, about hockey, Jimmy. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? Now that Steven Stamkos is out, there's a lot of people who are going to say, you know what? I don't even want to watch NHL Network. I don't care that the Avalanche is playing the Lightning. I don't care that the Penguins are playing the, the Lightning. They're not going to see Steven Stamkos. And you know what? He's a player like in the MLB. You're looking at Steven Strasburg. In the NFL, you're looking at players like RG3. You know, NBA, obviously, LeBron James. But you know what? All these star athletes, 
now you lose one from the NHL. The NHL suffered dramatically when they lost Crosby for a year and a half. I was happy. Sidney Crosby's a little different than Steven Stamkos. He is, but Steven Stamkos plays in Tampa Bay. He's basically a middle generation. It's Florida. They shouldn't have a hockey team in the first place. He's the reason they have a hockey team. No, he's not. Vinny LeCavalier's the reason they had a hockey team in the first place. Why they still have Marty St. Louis is the reason they have a hockey team in Tampa Bay. Steven Stamkos, bro. It is not Steven Stamkos. You know what? I don't think half the league knows, or half the people who follow hockey have any idea who Steven Stamkos is, other than the fact that he's that random guy that plays Tampa Bay. They're not going to care that he's out with a broken leg. I'm sorry. If our viewership was more hockey-focused, I would freaking debate the hell out of you with that one. But we're not. That didn't work out. (laughs) (laughs) That was just just the wrong one. But you know what? It's sad. It's a bad injury. I, I saw it myself, and that wasn't nice. It wasn't good. But you know... It's not going to be as monumentally collapsing to the National Hockey League as Jimmy over here thinks it is. I just, I just don't, don't see that. Uh, but you know, that's enough hockey for today. I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of over it already. Even though my Islanders are playing and doing well, and this, and it looks like the Ranger game furs on some Devils kid. <laughs> but moving on in baseball, uh, free agency started just uh, the other day, and. Jimmy says it's breaking news. I didn't think it's surprising in the least bit. Robbie Cano, Hiroki Kuroda, and Curtis Granison all declined their $14.1 million offers. Now, wouldn't it be nice to get a $14.1 million offer for anything? It would. Yeah. For us to do the show, it would. Yeah. Get a $14. I mean, I'll be a $14. <laughs> that's it. <that's, yeah. laughs> I mean, I'm with that right now. I think right now we're investing negative $14 a minute on this show. That's... You think our time's that valuable? I do. Okay. I like it. I like my time. I don't like your time. I like my time. <laughs> really? Um, what language do you speak there? I just... Moving past that. So, yeah, they declined their qualifying over. Surprise, surprise. I don't even want Corona to come back. He plummeted at the end of the year last year. I don't want him to come back. Their pitching staff sucks as is. I, I'd rather rely on uh, almost like a guessing box rather than have the one pitcher. So, yeah, he'll go out there. He'll do something good. He sucked last So you year. want, okay, let, let me let me just figure this out here. You want to get rid of one of your most reliable starting pitcher last year? He certainly wasn't reliable towards the end of the year last year when we really needed him. No one was reliable on that team last year. But so you know what, he came Do you want to get rid of CeCe Sabathia? He, no, no. He, he, he wasn't kidding. reliable either. Right, well, you know what, but what I'm trying to say is for a guy that proved to be reliable, even with CeCe playing terrible throughout the year, Kuroda came in and he was playing fantastic the first Maybe 85 games of the year. We're like, wow, this is pretty impressive for what he's doing. Down the stretch, when we really did need him, when we needed those wins, what hurt us most was being swept by the Mets. Yep. But you know what? Coming down the stretch, exactly. Coming down the stretch, when we really needed him, he collapsed. And look, I mean, Phil Hughes certainly didn't help too, but the two of them together. They had probably two of the two pitchers on one team. They had the worst record in the MLB of any two pitchers combined. It was terrible. I don't, I don't want him back. He's... He's just an NL pitcher. That's what he is. He was your most dominant pitcher for two years. I don't give a shit. He's gone. He's done. I, I, I'm, jump, I'm jumping uh, my own bandwagon here for this guy. He's done. I don't want him here anymore. I really don't want him here. You're going to collapse under pressure like that when we really needed you. Done. Goodbye. That's New York media. Maybe we're kind of New York media-ish. Ish. Uh. Well, the Yankees. The Yankees are looking at the very most aging Carlos Beltran. Uh, McCann came out saying he would love to play for the Yankees. But I heard he's going to Texas. McCann came out saying he would love to play for the Yankees. Still heard he's going to Texas. <laughs> and I still heard that the Mets, well, actually, um, oh, what's his face? Said it, Colin said it, that the Mets will not be signing a $100,000 player. $100 million. $100 million. If that's like a $100,000 player, they might as well walk away. They're done. <laughs> They're done. <laughs> they won't do that either. <laughs> Although, I, I think the Mets are going to end up with Curtis Granderson. I think he's going to come cross town. He's going to be playing center field for the New York Metropolitans next year. I think that's a great fit for them. Um, he's a good 32-year-old outfielder with good defense, power. The Mets need a power bat in that outfield. They can't rely on Juan Lagares, Eric Young, and whatever bum they play in right field from the time from now until the end of time. Uh, I think Granison will sign a three, three to four years, about forty-two to fifty million dollar contract. And the Mets will have themselves a nice little center fielder for a little bit. It's probably going to come to their benefit that he got hurt. Um, I'm surprised he didn't take the Yankee qualifying or offer $14.1 million. Um, 
he really could have shown that he was healthy in the last, next year and could have springboarded that into his last big contract. But instead, he wants to go for three to four years. And I understand why he's doing that. He was he had some pretty freaky accidents that last year with the thumb and the arm. And this will allow him to get some financial satisfaction just in case he does get hurt again and can't fulfill the rest of his contract, a la Pedro Martinez. Uh, so I, I believe he's going to be a Met next year. The Mets don't have to worry about their pick being um, taken away if they sign a top free agent. And you know what? He's well within that price range. I think he'll do good for them. He knows how to play in the New York media. And will it be weird seeing a Curtis Grandstand orange and blue? It will. <clears throat> I mean, how many times have we seen it done before between David Cohen, Doc Good, and Daryl Strawberry? Obviously, we're talking about players that played in the past, but it, it, it's been done before. Uh, now, if the Mets do happen to sign a prospect in the offseason, that's one thing. A center fielder comes at a larger figure than a left and a right fielder. Do the Mets have a pocket for that right now? Um, the Mets are able to spend $40 million. For this year, when I say forty, I mean they can increase their payroll by forty million. So if they spend twelve a year on Granderson, they're able to do that. Um, they don't have, and it's going to come shocking to you. The Mets don't have many holes. You, you can laugh now. Um, they have they have a good catcher in Darno. They have some infield with David Wright. They have Ruben Tejada. They're going to sign a shortstop, either Johnny Peralta or Stephen Drew, but that'll cost another eight to nine million. Um, they have a first baseman, whether it's going to be Daniel Murphy, Lucas Duda, Ike Davis, one of them. And they have a pitching staff. They have a pitching staff with uh, Dylan G., John Neese, Zach Wheeler. Um, they may sign Bronson Arroyo. Uh, they have some players they can sign. Their bullpen is pretty, uh, pretty set already. It's their A team. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You got me on that one. <laughs> but, on that note, yeah. Robbie Cano also rejected his con to qualifying offer. Now, that one is the one that really wasn't surprising. Not at all. <clears throat> yeah. There's been all that controversy. I want 380,000 million freaking bajillion What's with dollars. you saying he wants 1,000 of everything? I don't know. I just want 1,000 of everything. Okay. Um, <laughs> how long do you think it's going to take Cano to sign? Uh, last minute. So February? Take last minute, and uh, he is going to battle. He's going to battle between teams. Because you think you know he's going to really have teams to battle between? He's, excuse me, he's not going to have many teams to battle. Um, one thing that's going to hold him back from teams wanting him for a high price is his laziness. They're going to say, no, you know what? We're not stupid. We know the Yankees are going to offer you more money. We don't want someone who's lazy. Now, other teams can play this to their advantage. Other teams can say, you know what? We need to fight the Yankees. The Yankees have the most money. How about we do this? Let's offer him this amount and then this amount. Go back and forth with the Yankees. Let the Yankees spend a hell of a lot of money on this guy. So, you know what? Now they can't go out and spend what they want to spend on anybody else. They'll bank up all their money on this one guy. And look, it's almost like if you've ever watched uh, Storage Wars. You know, they're going to just raise the price on everybody until someone says, I'm going to bet this much. Okay, done. Solid. I'm out. I'm not betting anymore. They're almost going to use Robbie Cano to their advantage because they don't want to have a lazy um, out infielder running, hitting. He doesn't do anything. He's very lazy. He's great. I'll say him and Pedroia, hands down, the best second basemen in the league. Yes. Um, they play two totally different style of games. But, um, you know, at the plate when he hits, he's a very strong batter. When he's in the field... He has a very lackadaisy style of play, but he's there. He makes the play every time. He rarely makes an error. It's just you don't want someone running the base the way he runs. Plain and simple. I wouldn't want that on my team either. Never. If I have a team that I don't really have to worry about saying, you know what, one position really won't hurt me. Yeah, you want the chemistry between a shortstop and a, and, a, and a second baseman for the double play especially. You want someone to carry that gut, that hole right there. He's your guy. I understand that. You want the power bat in the lineup. But you know what? He can possibly, if he leaves the Yankees, with the big head that he has, he can cause problems on other teams. I, I can definitely see that happening. I, I agree. And, you know, I do think Rabbit can end up as a Yankee again. Um, Hal and Hank cannot let him go. You have <clears> – <throat> you need you need more firepower. You need something in the middle of that lineup. You're letting Granderson go. You cannot let Cano go as well. McCann's not going to come to New York. McCann will be in Texas next year, and he'll be taking swings at Arlington's fence. So you can't let Cano go too. 
Although it'll be interesting to see if they get Beltran or uh, Sinshu Chu. I heard even Jacoby Ellsbury to look at it also. The Mets are. No, no, the Mets the Yankees? are. The Yankees? I heard more Sinshu uh, Chu. Uh, the Mets won't sign Chu. Chu wants over oh, $100 million now. Wow. So the Yankees are looking at Chu Chu, Beltran, yep. and Ellsbury. How would that be? I would have to sit back and think about the Ellsbury trade because you know, or the Ellsbury pickup rather, because you know what? I never, ever liked Johnny Damon as a Yankee. I never liked him. I never wanted him. I portrayed him as, although he had his days with the Royals, I said, you know what? This is the guy who, to me, is. That's where he came from. The Royals came from? Yes. Yeah. To me, he was uh, once a Red Sox, always a Red Sox. You know, he fit the bill of the exact Neanderthal. I imagined when looking at the Red Sox with the long hair and the beard like that. I didn't like it. I wasn't a fan of it. It was very dirty. I'm glad when he came over to the Yankees, they made him shave his face, made him shave his head, made him look very professional because that's where the Yankees are. The Red Sox are very unprofessional. Um, I, I don't know. I, I would need an episode to think about that. An episode? Well, quickly, before we get to your rant, um, let me just make a few now. Actually, quickly. We were talking about Packers Giants. We never quite got to the Jets Bills game for this week. Sure. Uh, let's talk about that quickly. Even line games in Buffalo. Jets haven't won back to back games all season, but hopefully the bye week kind of got rid of that. Do you think the Jets are going to move on? The bye week has nothing to do with this. They're playing the Buffalo Bills. I understand it's going to be up in Buffalo. I understand it's going to be cold and looking for snow this weekend, but you know what? The Jets are playing the Bills. Every time they play one another, it's going to be a close game. Initially, I said, you know what, the Bills are probably going to score tops 13 points. Well, you know what, E.J. Manuel will play again. Okay, we know that. He played last now, week. Right, I said, again, he oh. will play again. He made it the, sound like he was the, dead. It, well, he basically was. He basically was. The Jets are going to win this game. Uh, my proof behind that is they're going to stop. Uh, they're going to stop Fred Jackson, who's running the ball now. The Jets allowed, I think it was five rushing yards in the first quarter against the Saints when they played them. So, seeing that... I, I got enough said with that right there. They're, they're going to come up with the, uh, with the victory on the offensive line, um, for the defensive line, I'm sorry, against the rushing. That They're going to be stopped right there. Um, their cornerbacks. Their cornerbacks have proven to be fairly well this year. Yes, I like the way that they're playing. Uh, their secondary has been great overall, even their safeties. Uh, Wilkerson is an absolute beast. Absolute beast. The Bills do not have a great offensive line. Wilkerson is going to have a field day on E.J. Manuel. Absolute field day. I see the Giants, the Jets coming away with this one. What did I say? 33-20 yeah, in Buffalo. They're really going to piss off the Bills fans because this is one of my favorite games to watch. I despise the Jets, but you know what? A Jets-Bills game is always good. And I'm not even shitting you. I love watching this game. And you know what? It's 8.59, so let's quickly move on to what everyone's here to listen to. Jimmy's rant. That's not true. This this, this week's rant, is it's not... Well, I'll make it into a rant. But I, I was going through some a couple of things on the internet whenever I'm bored during the day, which is a lot. I uh, find some stupid Doesn't stuff to watch this show. Um, maybe. Okay. <laughs> maybe. Uh, back in 2008, on September 6th, a guy decided to rob a convenience store, otherwise known as a 7-Eleven in Dallas. He was in a wheelchair. He wheeled his ass in there with a bat and a knife. Now you're thinking to yourself, okay, I can see that happening, maybe, possibly, and stealing money. No, no. He took this bat. He beat the piss out of the register. Didn't take any money. He took a 10 boxes of condoms and one energy drink. 10 boxes. I would pay to see this. I want to search the internet to find this video, and I, I want to post this on the Jimmy Rant page. I would love to see this. Apparently they say he was a homeless guy down in Dallas, Texas. Which, okay, you know, if he's homeless, that's great. Where the hell is the wheelchair from? Who knows? Where to get the bat? Where to get the knife? Why on earth would he get ten boxes of condoms? I can understand the one energy drink if you're buying ten boxes of condoms. That's, I don't know, really what's going to be left in your tank after you go through a box of condoms. I mean, it depends on how old he is. Um, I thought he got lucky, <laughs> I thought it was freaking hilarious. Um, we'll find out whatever else I can dig up for you next week. It'll be more of a rant, but I had to let this one go this week because 
This was freaking hilarious. Seven years ago, I read this story now. I'm saying a guy in a wheelchair going to 7-Eleven robbing the convenience store of condoms and an energy drink. I need to talk about that tonight. I thought it was freaking hilarious. And you know, um, that, that was pretty freaking hilarious. <laughs> and, you know, I look forward to the time for Halloween. I'm going to dress as a homeless guy in a wheelchair <laughs> and beat the crap out of a register. But, I'll, I'll be the register. Oh. How about that? <laughs> All right. Thanks again to Bobby Rajabi of It's M.M. Amazing to coming on the show and uh, teaching us a little about UFC. Um, for Jimmy, I'm Steve. We'll see you next Tuesday.